is module four, section two of our Lean Six Sigma certification and training. This is the module on basic statistics. So key learning points from this module are around the fact that simple statistics can increase your understanding of process behavior and helps identify improvement opportunities for 5S and right throughout the workplace. Some of the common statistics you may see in everyday life are miles per gallon or miles per litre, median home prices, consumer price index, inflation rate, stock market average, airline on time arrival rate. Statistics are computed using data and they're also summarised. They summarise the data and help us predict future performance. So we use basic statistics every day. The list above captures just a few of the many places that simple stats are used to summarize data throughout your project that you will do as part of this certification course we'll use data to focus our efforts the ultimate goal is to find the why or the outputs and the relationship between that and the inputs and this gives us the power of prediction rather than detection so the fundamental, the fundamental objective in any Lean Six Sigma project is to find the relationship between outputs and inputs. Basic stats allow us to quantify the behaviour of the inputs and the outputs, or the X's and the Y's. By establishing the relationship of each input to the outputs we're interested in, then we can predict the response given a set of input conditions. This is a marked change from counting the scrap at the end of the day. So here we see the first thing you need to do when you're looking at any type of stats is let's visualize it. So before we apply any statistical tools, visually display and look at your data. A histogram allows us to look at how the data is distributed across a Y scale of measure. So the following data came from our bicycle test facility. Stopping distance is required to bring a 150 pound weight to a complete stop with the rear brake applied from a 10 miles per hour cruising speed. So this is an exercise. Simply plot the frequency of occurrence of each number and count the total number of samples or N just plot that on a piece of paper just pause the video for a few seconds plot it on a piece of paper next we'll look at measures of central tendency so in addition to counting occurrences and graphing the results we can describe processes in terms of central tendency and dispersion so the measures of central tendency are the mean or x bar this is the arithmetic average of a set of values this uses the quantitative value of each data point and it's strongly influenced by extreme values the median this is the number that reflects the middle of a set of values it's the 50th percentile so this is identified as the middle number after all the values are sorted from high to low this isn't affected by extreme values the final one the mode this is the most frequently occurring value in a data set. So, as we look at here, we have the uh, stopping distances again. So, simply pause the video once more, determine the mean, median, and mode for the bicycle stopping distances used to create the histograms. Don't forget the mean is the average, the median is the 50th percentile and the mode the highest frequency of occurrence. Okay, what we see here is how distribution shape affects the location of our central tendency stats. Mean values are influenced by extreme values and thus move in the direction of the long tails in the skewed distributions shown here. In these extreme cases, the median is a better measure of the center or balance point of the distribution. Home sale prices will be a good example of a positive skewed distribution 
where the median is used over the mean as the statistic of choice. Also notice that in the normal or bell-shaped curve, the mean is equal to the median and also equal to the mod. So they're all at the same point in the normal distribution. So some of the measures of dispersion. We've got range, sample variance, sample standard deviation. So any business would be simple to run if all outcomes were perfectly predictable. Since variation exists, we need a way to quantify it. These statistics help us to describe the amount of variation in our product or process. Range, variance and standard deviation are all measures of process or product variation. They describe the dispersion of the data. The job of your project when you're looking at these variations is to minimize the, these statistics. Note that the outliers will greatly influence these computed statistics. Here are those examples of measures of dispersion again with the range, the sample variance and the standard deviation. So here's a little dispersion exercise for you. To find the measures of dispersion for the stopping distances. So fill in the table on the right, just draw this out, pause the, uh, or when you've downloaded this from our student centre, simply print this one off, use the slide and use the table on the right. Calculate the range, the variance and the standard deviation. So when we talk about samples, a sample is literally just a subset of all the possible values. But since a sample does not contain all the pop pop possible values, there is some uncertainty about the population. Hence, any statistics such as mean and standard deviation are just estimates of the true population parameters. So virtually every project data set you encounter will be sample data and not population data. In a factory environment, it's not practical to save and measure every single unit for every possible output or every possible Y. Therefore, we rely on sample data to provide estimates of what the true population of parts or products looks like. We'll explore the precision of our estimates in the confidence interval section. Again, we would rarely use the population parameter equation shown above. Populations are complete data sets. Since it's unlikely that we could measure a total population, we use samples to predict the characteristics of the population. We would sample some number of products made over the course of a year to predict the characteristics of the product population for that year. So we might sample five parts stamped on machine XYZ and plot the average and range on a control chart to predict the output of all the parts made that day. We use N minus one, where N is the sample size, in the calculation of the sample standard deviation because we lose one degree of freedom, or V, calculating the X bar. This bias correction is small as the sample size reaches 30 and above. So in 80 to 90% of problems worked, data will follow a normal curve or can be transformed to look like a normal curve. The curve is described by the X bar and S statistics. The area under the curve is 1 or 100%. So one of the reasons that we compute statistics from sample data is to generate a picture of how the product or process operates. With a mean and standard deviation, we can create the normal curve. We will use its properties to predict yields and defect levels. One of the properties of a normal distribution is that the mean, the mean is equal to the median and the mod. So your normal curve properties, so histograms, bar charts are developed from samples. Sample statistics, X bar and S, are calculated from representatives of the population. From the histogram and sample statistics, we form a curve that represents the population from which these samples were drawn. So 68.26% of the data falls within plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. 99.73% of the data 
will fall within plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean and 99.999998 of the data falls within plus or minus six standard deviations from the mean. Although most data you encounter in a project will be normally distributed, it will sometimes not follow a bell-shaped pattern. These distributions are some other typical data distributions found in industry. So log normal distributions can be used to describe data sets with long tails to the right. These are found in many mechanical systems. Many times these distributions can be transformed to a normal distribution by taking the log base 10 of all the data points. Exponential distributions describe things like times to complete orders and other time based systems. For an exponential distribution the mean value and the standard deviation are the same value. This type of data can be made to look more normal by taking the base E of the data. There is no guarantee that this transformation will make the data normal however. When little is known about a system we can use the uniform distribution as a worst case representation. In this type of distribution every value between the upper and lower limit is equally likely. So here's a normal curve exercise. So you pause the tape at this point. Below uh, on the screen is shown a histogram of the bike stopping distance data. So does the histogram appear normal? In your packs, print off this and just draw the vertical lines at plus and minus one, two and four standard deviations. So in summary, basic statistics. When analyzing any data set, draw a histogram. Define the data as a sample or a population. Calculate the central tendency. Quantify the amount of dispersion. Decide if the data is normally distributed. Calculate one, two, three, and five standard, dist standard distribution distances from X bar. So basic statistics, this is the common language for any Lean Six Sigma project. Measures of central tendency tell us where our data is centered. We can compare this central tendency to see how far from our target we are. Measures of dispersion gives a feel for the variation associated with our product or process. Knowing the properties of the normal curve, we can see the percentage of our data that lies within our customer specifications. For more resources on yellow, green, black and master black belt certification courses and exams or consultancy and training services, please visit beyondlean.com or leansixsigmacertification.com. Thank you.